waiting for it to start. Hello and welcome to the Raza reading group with me, Rachel, whose audio is a little peaky. There we go, that should be better. Uh, better sonic experience for everybody involved. Well, not me, I can't. <laughs> I can't hear my own recording. Uh, welcome to the Raza Reading Group. Today we're going to be starting a new paper. Um, and I fortuitously uh, had a poll yesterday, I believe, on the Raza YouTube channel um, where I asked what type of papers y'all wanted to see more of. And uh, System Papers was number one pick. And this is a System Paper. So um, the System Paper sort of just describes a system that somebody built and this is a system that somebody built and did well what do you know they used Raza um, so uh, the paper is called Eva talk a chatbot system for the Brazilian government virtual school um, and it is by a lot of authors whose names are on the screen and um, I do not speak Portuguese and have sort of only the vaguest understanding of Portuguese phonology. What I know is that there's a lot of diphthongs and I'm almost certainly going to say some of them wrong. So there's the authors. Uh, and it was a collaboration between the Electrical Engineering Department at the University of Brasilia and the National School of Public Administration uh, in Brasilia. So let's hop into it. Oh, and uh, this was published at... Hello, Lena. Welcome, welcome. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, the 22nd International Confri Conference on Enterprise Information Systems uh, 2020. So I guess that would be ICES, maybe? I-C-E-I-S? Um, yeah. Keywords, chatbot, customer service, and conversational interface. Abstract. EvaTalk is a complete chatbot system designed to attend users from the... Ooh, Escola Virtual do mm, de Governo? No, there's no there's no tilde. Governo. Governo? Oh, that could be localized. EVG, uh, which is a Brazilian virtual school maintained by the federal government. The proposed architecture was based on a framework to build chatbots, but it was necessary to replace and adapt services to attend EVG needs. The architecture is composed of the following modules. Interface for direct interaction. Artificial intelligence to comprehend and process language, language, process messages. Where did that come from? Uh, development to deal with the knowledge base and business intelligence to analyze messages. Interesting. Um, so I'm guessing this is like the the UI, right? People use to talk to the assistant, um, and this sounds like NLU. Uh, development to deal with the knowledge base. I'm guessing, since I know they use Raza, this is probably some sort of custom action. Um, I think Amina actually was asking about knowledge bases yesterday, so this should be relevant to you. Uh, and then business intelligence to analyze messages. I'm guessing that that would be like, ooh, that might be a, like a post-talk analytics thing. Um, we'll find out as we read the paper. The first version responded to questions related to institutional membership and chit-chat. Still, it was noted that Eva needed more training data, considering that the developers could not predict well user behavior. I mean, that's a classic chatbot development there. I think we've all run into that. Therefore, it was necessary to change the conversational data examples and flows to match user-based observation after release, preach, uh, which showed an increase in the chatbot's response confidence. Um, I'm sure they'll talk about it more. Just targeting high confidence isn't always the best idea, but... Um, it's a long paper. I'm sure they will talk about it in greater detail. The system relies mostly on data collected through the data analysis tools to evolve. I mean, it's like, yeah, I've been there. I'm, I feel you. Users will surprise you. All right. Uh, Escola Virtual do... Escola Virtual... Vir Virtual? It could be a flap. See, I, ooh, I just do not know about uh, Portuguese phonetics, so I, I don't know what sounds these are. Uh, governo? Possibly? Governo? Possibly? EVG. 
is a Brazilian virtual school that hosts free and open courses aimed at public servants in the area of interest in the areas of interest and responsibility of the federal public administration. I read that super bad. Okay, so it's a Brazilian virtual school. Um, it hosts free open courses specifically for public servants who work in uh, the interest and responsibility of federal public administration, providing unification of all government schools, and allowing studies and analysis of the phenomenon of training in public administration. Okay, so this is like professional training for, for public servants. Uh, EVG is maintained by the Brazilian federal government through the National School of Public Administration, ENAP. That's probably not how it's said, but that's how I'm going to read it from here on out. The number of enrollments in courses in this platform in 2018 was 442,000. All right, this is not a small assistant. This is uh, some serious scale, uh, increasing to 940,000 enrollments in 2019, according to the Open Information Dashboard. That is a lot of people. That's, that's creeping up on a million people. Uh, this growth raises a challenge, <laughs> no kidding, to the customer service area. Currently, the support is made through a contact us page in which the user can fill a form and have it sent to the support email where the staff can answer. Oh, ooh. I got nothing but admiration in my heart for the customer support people who are working with that load of like just like a lot of, of requests, I bet. Um, questions are related to procedures to engage or follow a course or even to become an EVG partner to provide course material. The job of the human attendance is to identify the issue and send the appropriate solution from a collection of default answers with step-by-step -step commands. Oh, this is a great case for automation. Great, great case for automation. This approach demands some human effort, which grows together with the platform, uh, which does not have all the financial resources to have as many attendants as needed. All right, I'm piecing together the picture here. They got these uh, this customer support agents that are just completely swamped. Um, like there is over a year period, almost over double the number of users of the system. They've got over a million users, even if most people don't ask a question. That is a lot of questions that are coming into the system. To deal with the growth of EVG and speed up the user support process, this work proposes a chatbot architecture to answer the frequently asked questions. Uh, chatbots receive natural language from users and execute one or more related commands to engage in a conversation, being able to adapt to new information or new requests if it employs machine learning. Um, so it sounds like uh, it's important to them to be able to handle, you know, variation in language. So something like a state machine uh, might not be the best choice, although that's more for um, for dialogue. But they're, they're, they want to be able to handle like different things that come up. The proposed implementation makes use of open source tools customized to attend EVG's needs. The development and implementation of a chatbot for the EVG platform is expected to lower the demand for human support without necessarily extinguishing it. Yep, very reasonable, you know, thoughts going into this, like we're probably going to need human assistance still, um, like there's going to be lots of edge cases, but if we can get the bulk of these questions answered automatically, uh, everyone's life should be a little bit easier. Uh, 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 and solve the most common user doubts. Also, it will have a good impact on the quality of service because providing an answer quickly has an impact on the responsiveness factor, which is one of the variables used to, to measure customer satisfaction. The chatbot's knowledge base will be supplied with the messages previously sent by users to the Contact Us page and the standard responses registered on a document used by the attendants when responding to the emails. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't read Cyrillic, but uh, this person asked, I'm wondering how many staff ended up in clinics before they launched a chatbot? It's a good question. It was, uh, I, hopefully none. Hopefully they were like, oh, we see this problem coming down the pipe and we're gonna, we're gonna get ahead of it. But yeah. Uh, as part of the personification of the chatbot, it was given the name Eva and the system is called Eva Talk. Uh, the process is organized as follows. Section two presents the other chat bar, bar, chat bar. Section two presents other chatbot architectures developed for Portuguese speaking users. Uh, oh, that's fantastic. So it'll be a little Portuguese language um, overview, which is going to be very helpful for me because like I mentioned, I'm not, um, I do not myself use Portuguese, but I know that a lot of people uh, 
do, do. <laughs> particularly a lot of people who use Raza uh, are, are Portuguese speakers. Section three raises requirements and spe specificities of EvaTalk. Section four shows the designed architecture. Section five describes EvaTalk behavior with real users. Uh, fantastic, looking forward to that in particular. Section six proposes the next steps from proving the system and section seven concludes the paper. Uh, is it open source too? I don't know. Um, that's a really good question. Let's see if I can. Well, that's bot front. Well, they don't have a GitHub link, which is what I searched for. Uh, so my answer is I have no idea. Um, all right. So what all are they doing? I'm sure they'll talk through this in detail. Uh, but they've got, wow, they've got uh, a pretty uh, big system here. Okay. So the users are using rocket chat to interface with the assistant. I don't think I've used rocket chat before, but I've definitely heard people mention it. So that's where my level of knowledge is about that. Uh, the message comes in to Raza NLU where the intent is identified. Uh, and then the uh, answer is selected by Raza, Raza Core SDK. Interesting. So there might be something uh, additional they're doing in here. Uh, and then Raza Core is trained with the conversations. Uh, or maybe this is a way for people to access the conversations afterwards. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure what, what the difference is between these two. Um, and we've got, so quite a few people working on this. We have data scientists who are working on Raza NLU and Core. Uh, UX specialists are helping pull together the uh, intentions, the intents and the stories. Uh, so they're, they're handling some of the data work as well. Uh, Ah, uh, I see, I see. Okay, so once the, um, okay, so this must be the Raza server, like the central Raza server. Uh, and then to get the database stuff out, because they have this big data set of, um, it sounds like probably not conversations, but like two turn pairs where like the user writes in and then the assistant responds back. Um, they're using Elasticsearch and then Kibana, Kibana? Uh, I'm not familiar with this. I'm assuming it's some sort of uh, knowledge base support system. I'm sure they'll talk about it. Uh, and then the chatbot project team is working presumably specifically on you know stuff related to the, the chatbot. And then I'm guessing that these are the people who are uh, developing the, the answers and uh, would include like the, the customer support. So lots going on here. Oh, and they're using Jupyter to uh, to analyze the, the data and uh, get insights. I think they talked about like data insights in the, uh, the algorithm. Yeah, okay, really uh, uh, one thing that's jumping out at me right away is the way that different people in different job roles are interacting with different uh, components of the assistant, which I think is makes a lot of sense, particularly for something like this where you have um, it sounds like a little bit of a larger team because there were quite a few authors and uh, a lot of users. Okay, popping back into the paper. Related works. Despite relying on recent areas of study to answer Portuguese written question, some works developed uh, Chatbot systems were composed mainly by three main layers, the user interface, natural language understanding, and a knowledge base. Oh, thank you. Amina says, uh, Kibana, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, uh, is an open source data visualization exploration tool used for log and time series analytics. Um, and Nick says that it can be used for indexing and dashboard as well. Okay, so this is sort of like a way for people to, to understand what's going on. Thank you. It's very helpful. Uh, teaching machine says but we also have uh, Gina AI which is similar to Elasticsearch oh. I yeah I'm wondering if they'll talk about sort of their their choice of, of knowledge bases and and whatnot a little bit further down uh, all right so they're saying the Portuguese systems user interface uh, NLU and a knowledge base for uh, 
Uh, and you may be wondering, hey, Rachel, why isn't there, you know, um, like a dialogue policy here? It's because this is not for dialogue policies. This is specifically for question answering. So it's a little bit of a different, um, it's a little bit of a different problem, right? It's, it's more focused on a one turn interaction where I ask a question and then you automatically answer it in the case that I'm the user, I guess, in this example. Um, so you don't really need to, to worry too much about maintaining sort of the track of a conversation over time and continuing to add new turns. Uh, what presents relative inconsistency are the technologies used as there are many tools and algorithms still under development for this purpose. Yeah, definitely a lot going on in the uh, both the question answering and the conversational AI space, I would say. Avila et al. Avila et al. And I'm probably saying that wrong, proposed a chatbot architecture to answer questions related to medicine prices. Uh, Medibot is contacted via Telegram and has a custom-made module to understand natural language. Okay, so it sounds like they're doing their own NLU. It depends on external resources to load its knowledge base. Fialho? Fialho? Uh, also probably saying that wrong. I'm so sorry if any of y'all speak Portuguese. Uh, it's just not, not a language I've ever studied. Uh, created a conversational interface system that helps tourists to find answers about Montserrat. I'm guessing that this is a tourist attraction. Uh, its learning data demands some effort to create and maintain because it is defined by XML files that require a long-winded syntax. Okay, so all of the uh, all of the data for this is is stored in XML. Um, we use at Raza we use uh, YAML currently and previously. Uh, Markdown. I was like, my, my brain kept saying HTML. And I was like, I know it's not HTML. Stop telling me wrong words, brain. Uh, Ketzmer et al. developed a text-to-speech architecture for a smart home system. And Mos Mostaco? Mostacio? I don't know what this, the, the accent does to the Z. Uh, proposed one that retrieves information about agricultural sensor networks. Oh, really interesting. So you can be like, you know, in your tractor and be like, hey, you know, what's the phosphorus levels look like in field B or something and get information on that. That sounds really useful. Uh, hi, Jovan. Uh, Nick says, Rocket Chat is the GUI for the front end. I'm assuming based on their architecture diagram, but like I mentioned, it's not something I've ever used. I've just sort of vaguely heard about it. Uh, both are powered by IBM Watson, which is not open source, that is true, and has uh, a very limited free version. I don't think I've used Watson, but I'm sort of familiar with it. However, none of the authors present ways of collecting massive data from the user to understand the user's behavior and help the evolving process of the chatbot by feeding it back collected data. Um, and this is, you know, so core to how we do things at Raza, and uh, we call it um, conversation-driven development. Uh, teaching machine says previously it was JSON. Uh, so the we do use JSON for sending like requests back. And forth. We still use JSON, but like the the files that you edit as a user um, are at this point mostly YAML. But we do we we, we do use them both. <laughs> Uh, therefore, De La Cerda, Sierra, uh, and Aguiar worked on an open source framework that has the basic layers, but also holds a data analytics module. Even though the architecture shown in figure one and proposed by De La Cerda and Aguiar, again, sorry about it, uh, is a complete chatbot system, it was a generalist implementation. Therefore, this work served as a starting point to Eva talk, but it was necessary to modify and replace some services to create a system suitable for EVG customer service. Okay, so they're using this, this previous system as sort of a, a broad um, architectural template, but it sounds like they're going to have to rebuild a lot of stuff for their particular use case. Um, Nick says, does chatbot have a GitHub link or is it just a proposed concept? I believe this is in production, the system. I do not know whether or not the code has been open source. Um, I bet they'll talk about it though. All right, system requirements. 
Recent studies revealed that users expect chatbots to behave as humans, but at the same time, they also demand much more from it than from a human attendant. So it is important that it is evident for a user what are chatbot features and limit limitations. That's a good point. Uh, therefore, Eva must not pretend to be human, but act as one. So be able to handle human language input, but not be like, it's me, a normal human and not a robot. Also, it should provide the user uh, what are its capabilities when convenient in a conversation. Yeah, this is a big thing, um, particularly in um, uh, home voice assistants or systems that are primarily voice. Discovery, like figuring out that you can do a different thing than you are currently doing with your assistant has been uh, something that a lot of people have spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, and yeah, the. I want to say, like, the last time I saw stats, it was like 80% of interactions with, with voice assistants in the home were setting a timer. Uh, and that's like the main thing that people use them for. So how do you help people know that they can do more, but also do people want to do other things with it? Um, yeah, so having like very natural nudges in the conversation, like, oh, you can do this here if that's helpful to you without like getting too off track or talking too much about other stuff that's not relevant to your user is definitely... Um, it's an interesting design challenge. Uh, Teaching Machine says, I'm using Grafana open source for my chatbots analytics dashboard link. Interesting. I don't think I have uh, heard of that previously. I'll have to look into it. Besides that, so talking about discovery, which is a problem, due to the emergence of uh, different languages in computer-mediated interactions, and therefore the occurrence of new discursive genres online, uh, Eva should be able to understand terms outside standard Portuguese, as the chat environment implies the occurrence of shortcuts to speed communication, misspelling, and acronyms. Um, so sometimes you'll hear people talk about noisy user-generated text or user-generated text. Um, and the idea there is usually that people are not going to be writing in a super formal style. They'll be, you know, like they mentioned here, using abbreviations and like emojis. And um, it would be very rare for someone to share a sentence like this using this sort of like stylistic form uh, to a chat bot, right? And if they did, you'd probably suspect that that might itself be a bot because this isn't how people talk to uh, talk in a chat situation, if that makes sense. Hello, Assam. Welcome. These behaviors are already noticeable in emails received by EVG's customer service. Oh, fantastic. So they have training data that's in a similar, um, similar sort of, uh, I believe they called it uh, discursive genres, so like discourse. The chatbot must be capable of receiving a sentence in the user's natural language and producing an adequate response if the subject of the conversation pertains to the chatbot's domain. Regarding the content that the chatbot must answer, Table 1 lists the subjects that EVG emails receive questions about. At its final release, it must be able to answer all of these subjects, so all the types of, of questions. Initially, as a release strategy, the chat widget will be exclusively available on the institutional membership page of EVG, uh, and there's a link here. Therefore, it will only answer questions re related to this page and chit chat making use of data collected through the traditional customer service. Okay, I, I love this strategy too, starting, you know, limited release, only one place, limited domain, only going to answer certain questions. Uh, I think that's very uh, wise. This approach intends to provide a way to evaluate the architecture and the knowledge base in an environment that presents a lower risk. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, finally, EvaTalk must be compatible with EVG's visual identity to maintain, to manage customer service and have data analysis tools to identify problems and improve its training. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, folks in the chat have also been mentioning other possible data analysis tools to, to use. All right, so here are the types of questions. Um, and it looks like there's a little bit of a hierarchical structure here. So within this general type, all of these other things. Um, and this would be very doable with Raza using an FAQ system. So you would have, you know, a single intent that is like, hey, someone's asking about their account. And then you would determine what are the things that they were asking in that sort of FAQ structure, uh, and then pick the appropriate response based on the second round of intent identification. 
Uh, so signing up, signing in, editing personal data, deleting account, changing and recovering passwords. And if I had to guess, I would say the majority of customer service interactions are probably around this topic, just based on being familiar <laughs> with customer service for uh, online accounts. Uh, and then certificates, issue a certificate, validate a certificate, or more details about it. Courses, course access, course availability, uh, anticipate completion, and studies program. Uh, I don't know what this would be. I guess when do they expect the course to be over, maybe? Uh, course enroll it, enrollment, enroll in a course, get proof of enrollment, validate proof of enrollment, re-enroll in a course, or cancel enrollment. And then institutional membership. Uh, categories, become a partner, statistics, course hosting, partners, and offered services. Uh, Amina says, the subject intents here and the topics are entities. My guess would be that these are all intents, uh, and the way that it would be handled um, is that there are a bunch of FAQ intents. I'm sure they'll talk about this more, but the way I would do it if I had this sort of hierarchical structure is that each of these would be an FAQ intent, like a specific one. And then uh, under that, I would have all of these sort of um, FAQs that would that would trigger. And that makes sense because the, the sort of the idea of FAQ or chit chat is that it's going to be one or possibly two turns. Uh, and I think that makes a lot of sense for... Um, for this particular structure. But I'm sure they'll talk about it. Okay, oh, we've read all that. Section four, architecture. Figure two shows the architecture design for the Eva Talk system, which will be detailed later in this paper. I'm pretty sure we watched watch that saw that i'm pretty sure this is figure nope this is figure one. Oh, oh i see i see okay so this is the proposed architecture from another paper and the one that they actually went with is this all right bo, bo, bo. all right okay that also makes sense sense why i was not entirely sure like what went to where in that other document uh, architecture i'm thinking that might be a slightly older version of raza where things were broken up a little bit more all right, so they said they'll talk about it a little bit more, uh, but we have a user who interfaces with the web chat. Uh, and then before their question, the text is sent to Raza, it looks like they're doing some text cleaning and message collector. I don't know what that would be, um, but they're doing some pre-processing before they send it to Raza NLU. Uh, and Raza... Uh, also has, you know, the domain.yaml, uh, the training data, and the Raza generator. I don't know what this is. That could be a typo, and this is generating language. This might be something that they built custom as well, so we'll, I'm, I'm sure they'll talk about it more. Uh, and then the data, uh, they're going through RabbitMQ, and then... Uh, a consumer for that, and then Elasticsearch, and then Kibana. So this is their um, this is their dashboard for for understanding the assistant. Uh, okay, and then this is so these little sections here are labeled to fit with the uh, the other system architecture that they're building on. All right, all right. Um, will be detailed later on in this paper. In addition to the basic layers used in chatbot systems, it has a layer to run data analysis. These layers will be called modules and were divided in the following ways, interface, artificial intelligence, development, and business intelligence. So that's these things in sort of dashed lines around here. In this architecture, the user interacts directly with the interface module, which receives messages and sends them to the artificial intelligence module. Before being handled by the conversational intelligence tool, the message will pass through middleware to be pre-processed. Then the conversational intelligence tool sends the message's response back to the interface module where it was displayed to the user. Both. The message and response are sent to the business intelligence module where they will be indexed on data analysis tools and stored in a database. Okay, so every, every turn, things get stored automatically. It all happens at running time, but the development module is modified before runtime, and it is where the developers will provide the knowledge base data collected by traditional customer service. Uh, 
when the system is up, this module will serve data to the training process made by the artificial intelligence module. Okay, so things are being stored online and then um, sort of batch updates, which is the sort of how we recommend doing CDD. Um, uh, Nick says, they at least bother about any pipelines and policy, I guess? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're going to talk about it or not. Yeah, uh, we'll see if they if they talk about it. All right, interface module. An important part of the chatbot is its graphical interface because it's where users have direct interaction with the system. Some chatbot tools offer the capability to work with multiple endpoints for user interaction for the same bot at the same time. Um, although this is a possibility for the future, Eva Talk is focused on using only one endpoint for chat conversations. During the development of EvaTalk, it was observed that some features were important to the user interface in this specific use case, such as the possibility to insert buttons in the conversation to guide them. Uh, can be very, very helpful if you're, there's places where you notice people are tending to have a conversation breakdown. Compatibility with a markup language, which enables formatted linking and image viewing. The alternative chosen for EvaTalk was a modified version of an open source software called WebChat. Uh, link to that. Uh, it has been customized to have a visual identity compatibility with EVG. The main advantages of web chat are the ease of customization and the development of new features. It is also suitable for chatbots since other tools have more complex functioning to attend multiple channels of communication, which is not the goal for this work. Um, yeah, I... I'm just going to quickly look at this. Nope, that's not the right one. Was it from Bot Framework? No, Bot Front. Let's see. I think this is the one that I did a video on a while ago. Well, alright, I will just type it. There we go. Nope, not that one. Wow, I can't use computers today. It's, uh, that's gonna be a problem for me. Oh my god, stay. Okay, so this is what, uh, the default web chat looks like. And uh, it's got a bunch of features and, okay, it looks like it's a script that you add to the body of your, uh, your HTML. And there's also a React component. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, this isn't the one. I think I used something else that has a slightly different name that's sort of similar, but this is sort of what it looks like. Gotcha. Artificial intelligence module. To achieve the expected user experience for Eva Talk, it is necessary to. I lost my chat. There we go. Pop in. Pop in. Pop in. There we go. It is necessary to let users express themselves through Portuguese written text. This implies the necessity of the chatbot being able to understand the user's natural language, deal with variations from standard Portuguese language, and maintain a coherent conversation flow as per the requirements defined in section three. For a chatbot, two parts are seen as needed for to be able to engage in conversation with the user. An NLU, natural language understanding processor, and a dialogue management system. Uh, Oh, that's good to know. Uh, Mohammed says uh, it's from Botfront and it uses a socket channel and not rest input. Good to know. An NLU processor is responsible for converting user messages in their natural language to a machine readable form so that it can be processed in further steps. 
A dialog management system should receive the NLU processor's output and produce a response that fits the context of what the user said. Uh, chat room. Yes, that is what I was looking for. Thank you. Um, and I will say the one thing that I have heard about chat room, just as an FYI, is that it can be very slow when you have a very long conversation. So if you were expecting people to talk to it many turns, um, it might not be the best choice. And I, I should say that, like, I heard that. I think somebody brought that up like a month ago, so it, it might be updated currently or in the future so that that is fixed. All right. Um, so dialogue management, NLU, what are they going to use? It's Raza. That's us. There's some tools capable of providing these components. For Eva Talk project, the Raza stack was chosen. Raza is an open source toolkit for building conversational systems composed of Raza NLU and Raza Core. Um, and this is, this terminology is a little bit out of date. And as we move more and more towards end to end, we're probably going to completely dissolve that distinction. But that's definitely what we said in that paper. So uh, good citation. <laughs> Uh, which are its NLU processor and dialog management system, respectively. Some factors that contributed to preferring RASA are the ease of use due to human readable training data formats, rather than raw XML, which just seems rough, uh, predefined pipelines for training, high flexibility in connection with external services, and an active community that can be used for troubleshooting. So I'm guessing that they possibly just used um, the default pipeline with the Portuguese language tag, and I'm guessing the spacey Portuguese models. Um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Spacey supports Portuguese, but it might have a single model for both European and Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, high flexibility in connection with external services, because we don't own any of them, so we're not going to push you towards one or the other, uh, and an active community that can be useful for troubleshooting. Uh, the choice of the technological stack for a chatbot influences its training data format because it needs to be compatible with the technology. Choosing Raza introduced some concepts such as intents, stories, utterances, and a domain file. For Raza, intents are variations of the same sentence that the, other, that the user is expected to send in a conversation. Stories describe the conversation flow. Utterances are what the chatbot can say back to the user, and the domain file acts as an index for all of the actions available to the chatbot. Oh, that's a really good, succinct description. The integration with the interface module is made through a connector. There are standard connectors to some of the most popular interfaces and messaging services with input and output channels. However, to deal with some situations presented in section three, it was necessary to develop a custom connector which had an expandable architecture through a middleware implementation. Uh, can you briefly highlight CMD data flow or saving conversation in figure two? C and D. Yeah, I am not 100% sure about some of this stuff. Like I'm not, I'm assuming they're going to talk about it in more detail. I don't know what the Raza generator is. This may be something that they mentioned that was an additional part of their, um, their flow. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm guessing that this consumer here takes in the data from, from Rabbit, uh, and then converts it to a format that's appropriate for an elastic search, search is my guest there. Um, and then I don't know what they're using Mongo for. We'll, we'll find out when they talk about it. Uh. Uh, some middleware processes. It is also possible to access and modify data that goes beyond the message text, such as session identifiers. Uh, and this is how we, we know whether someone is continuing in the same conversation or is starting a new conversation. Using the middleware approach, two middlewares were added to EvaTalk. One of them is responsible but for cleaning user messages by removing accents, punctuation, and replacing common web acronyms with its standard spelling. That is really interesting. So Portuguese, I know, has a lot of accents. Um, so I'm guessing they're removing them just for for ease of processing and maybe to reduce the, the size of their total number of characters, possibly. Uh, only the data part, it's not clear. Yeah, I also don't know. 
Uh, we'll get there. Mm -mm -mm. The list of substitution rules changes based on the developer's analysis of the data collected on user interactions. Uh, okay, so these are some just some handwritten rules that I say just. So these are some handwritten rules that um, I'm assuming they're choosing to deploy based on improving overall performance. The middleware requires that the NLU training examples follow the same rules to increase precision. Yep, absolutely. Want to make sure that you've got the same pre-processing throughout. This is not only this is not an unexplored approach since Ferreria, for maybe two hours is a trail. I don't know. Uh, had to remove and manually correct words or sentences that were grammatically incorrect to process this ta the text in the natural language processing. Another middleware was implemented to collect user messages that were sent in a short period. The dialog management system default behavior is to process each message as a first in, first out queue. The, oh, I see. So when people, yeah, this is something I know that people have had problems with in Facebook chat. If somebody like message, 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 and then your assistant like replies, um, it'll reply to the first message. So they're taking like, I guess they're adding like a tiny sleep after each message and then combining a bunch of messages together. Uh, the middleware awaits for a new user message, mess, I'm guessing, message before passing the collected messages ahead uh, before it to the next middleware or the chatbot. Okay, so it's just aggregating stuff that happens together. If a user sends two messages in a row and the first one has punctuation that indicates the end of a sentence, the middleware sends them separately to be processed. If the punctuation is not present, the middleware appends the second message to the first message and sends them in one. Um, interesting. Yeah, I guess how well that works is going to depend on your specific user population. Um, there's a whole thing, certainly for like text messages for people roughly my age or, or younger, I would say, where adding punctuation at the end of a text message means you're angry. <laughs> um, but I don't know what the standards are for this particular population. And I'm guessing that these people who are working very close with that data have a better handle on it than I do. But I wouldn't do this for um, if you were building an assistant specifically to target, you know, young or middle aged white Americans <laughs> in Seattle, I guess. All right, development module. Okay, so this is the, the cleaner, and then this is the one that just takes multiple, multiple messages and concatenates them. Development module. To manage the chatbot's contents, developers will be manipulating files that contain response templates, conversation examples, or training data for the NLU processor. These files require specific formatting that follows the guidelines defined by the chatbot's conversation management system and NLU processor. The domain files works as an index for Raza, and it is the one that contains the response templates and maps all intents, stories, and actions that are described in other data files. Yeah, I think an index is a really good way to talk about the domain. Uh, Tobias and I talked about that in the office hours yesterday, a little bit. The mapping requires good management and effort to keep it synced with the content of the data files. Yeah, that is also something that we talked about, uh, the fact that you have to go through and sort of manually handle that stuff. Um, yeah, something to, to think about on our end. Oh, oh, I mean, we're open source. If you have a, if you want to propose a solution, uh, also we'd be happy to have it. To lower the number of errors. Ah, that's what that is. Related to content forming, an open source tool called Raza Generator was added to the Eva Talk system. It allows for developing content without referencing every data aisle in the domain file because it will be automatically created. As for the response templates, they are defined in a separate file, and Generator will take care of appending them to the main files that are generated. This, this is clever. Uh, thus, developers collected question examples from the customer service email box for each topic of institutional membership and are placed in a data file. The responses given through the email were adapted to fit a chat environment. Uh, let me pull this up so we can check it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did I misspell it? D E N E. R A T O R. Oh, right. Uh, turns out there's no D in org. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
pop that in. Okay, simple way of generating a domain.yaml file for Raza. Uh, all right, Raza Denary Notebooks, test actions, templates, data, NLU, NLU. Okay, gotcha. So you feed it an actions module, uh, training data and templates, and then it will generate the domain for you as a little, little command line tool. Uh, queries can get quite complex. For example, you can specify the following. So just a, a big old example. Uh, you can use it inside a Python script. Uh, <laughs> it's currently tedious inside Raza. That's fair. Uh, here's a sample structure. Yeah. Okay, so these are these are things that the the developers thinking about. Um, who built this? MIT Colin Roller. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play around with this. This looks really cool, uh, and I had not heard of it before. And uh, I, I would say uh, interesting tool, and I wanna try it out. Mm, all right, what was I saying? Oh, I finished the section. Business intelligence module. All my questions are being answered. EvaTalk's dialogue management system outputs its conversational data in a specific format and already has some implemented compatibility layers with database management systems where it can be saved. To provide a way to store user conversations, MongoDB was chosen as a database management system because of its compatibility with other technologies used in EvaTalk and its document-based approach to saving data. Okay, so they're... Uh, the conversational data is put out in a specific format. They're storing they're storing it in MongoDB as documents, and also data generated by the chatbot contains the user messages, the chatbot's responses, and the classification made by the NLU processor, such as intention of the user. Collecting and analyzing users' data is part of the development process of Eva's content, and EVG is a platform. Since EvaTalk system can be part of EVG's user support process, platform issues can be identified through interactions with the chatbot. Uh, so this is like all the stuff that's in the tracker store. Besides that, the user interactions stored are also important to add aspects of the user's natural language to data and guide changes in conversational flows when it is clear that users are not reacting well to responses or having difficulties following the designed flow. Let me just double check this. Okay, so MongoDB is just storing user conversations, and I'm guessing this is like the text, uh, and Rabbit is storing the um, the whole tracker store, so all of the information that the the user, and all of the information that, that Raza gives you, like when you're debugging, I'm guessing. Ba -ba -ba -ba. A design analysis tool was used to allow developers to see a bigger picture of the interactions between the user and the chatbot. Elasticsearch and Kibana were chosen based on the previous study, which fit the requirements of EvaTalk's system. These tools allow the creation of dashboards with graphics and the extrapolation of the data collected from interactions. Um, I wonder how much... So it looks like they're interested in visualizing conversations as well. Um, for the intents, definitely the the intent, uh, the NLU insights feature that we just added to Raza X, I think would would also help handle some of these uh, these questions. One difficulty faced with these technological choices was consuming the data because of the specific data format of the interactions. To solve this, a message broker was used in conjunction with an evolution of a consumer from the De La Carta and Aguiar work. Okay, so this, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is taking in stuff from the, the tracker store and is um, changing the format so that it works with Elasticsearch. The evolution includes modifications to make the consumer an independent service, adapt the data format, collect new data, and add support for recovering from failures using a database base as a rep as a as a restoration point. Uh, and next says Rabbit NQ is an open source message broker software. Yeah, and 
I know that it doesn't always work for, for everyone who's using Raza, um, but uh, also a lot of um, a lot of sort of our, our commercial deployments use it. Uh, to chat results. As expected, the business analysis module provided insights about the first months of the chatbot in production. Figure three shows the relationship between the number of weekly messages and response confidence weekly. Initially, as part of initial testing, the chatbot had only institutional membership data and the first users were mostly professionals that were involved with EVG. Therefore, they knew what to ask because they had been working in the area and consequently, the confidence was high. Um, I would probably phrase that quite slightly differently. I would probably say that because the first users were very similar to the ones whose training data was included in the tr tr training, <laughs> confidence was high because the system had previously seen things that were very similar, right? Um, uh, this is a very common way of talking about things, but I, my preference is not to talk about how good users are at using a system because a well-designed system should meet users where they're at. You know what I mean? But I, again, lots of people will, will discuss things in this way. Uh, later, a substantial number of real users started to interact with the chat widget so that questions started to deviate from what developers initially inserted in the knowledge base. Yeah. Um, and that's when you know it's time to redo some stuff. With real users, confidence started to get low, and the chatbot team had to analyze stored conversations to understand the user behavior and update the knowledge base. Yep, some, some conversation-driven development. Apart from the daily process of including user messages that were not comprehended as new training data, because of the decrease in confidence scores, developers made major changes in conversational flow and the subjects that the chatbots was capable of responding to. Um, and it sounds like they're not using Raza X, but the way that you would do this in Raza X is as conversations go in, you would annotate and correct them and just add them to training data right away. Um, but I'm, I'm sure they have you know, good reasons for doing what they're doing. Conversations showed that, even though the chat widget was only on the institutional membership page, users tended to ask about other subjects that were listed in Table 1. Also, users that asked about institutional membership only had an interest in the main topic, becoming that, being that, becoming a partner. So that makes sense. So um, most people want to do, you know, a fairly small number of things. Hence, developers started populating the knowledge base with other subjects and their most asked topics, uh, and also remove topics that were not popular so that they would not influence the confidence score of other questions. Yeah, it's a great, um, a great way of removing intents as well. Um, Nick says, I guess they're connecting MongoDB with Raza Tracker and backend, they're connecting with RabbitMQES and Kibana. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what data is going where. Uh... These changes happened in the beginning of December 2019, and as a result, confidence started to increase again. So looking at this, uh, this is number of uh, messages, and uh, perhaps no surprise, um, we see that, you know, over Christmas holidays, which I'm assuming are also celebrated in Brazil, um, we see very few questions, then it picks back up in January, uh, and then confidence is this red line, and as more and more people use the system and a greater variety of things are seen, the system is uh, seeing more things that aren't like what it saw in its training data, and when that's corrected and new things are added to training data and more things are, um, you know, the the, mach the machine learning system is updated so that it better reflects the actual user case, then we start to see uh, confidence being high again because the system is seeing things like what it's seen before. At the end of the year, the chatbot received fewer messages <laughs> yeah, as users do not tend to access EVG as much this time of the year. Changes were really tested at the beginning of 2020 as user interactions increased and confidence scores maintained a great average week by week, indicating that conversational data modification was successful. Um, I would uh, probably not use confidence scores as a way to see 
that you're um personally i wouldn't use confidence confidence scores as a metric to determine whether or not your system is being successful um because just as an example if your system only knows about one category and it is you know asking how much it costs to buy a sheep um and uh that's the only thing it's been trained to recognize regardless of what people ask it's going to be like this looks like how to buy a sheep i'm pretty confident of that because that's the one thing i know right um so there are definitely situations where you can have high confidence and a system that doesn't work very well. But it also sounds like they're doing a lot of sort of um, looking at conversations and data management and updating and really proactive in the deployment of the system and evaluating it. So I think that, um, like, I don't think it's inherently a problem. It's just not if you were going to pick a single metric, the metric that I would choose. Um, I know a lot of people will choose things like, uh, how many conversations do you end up needing to pass to a human, for example, which I think might be useful in this situation because part of the reason they built the bot was to help reduce the total amount of just like the sheer volume of requests that their uh, uh, assistants are, are getting. So just thoughts. Uh, uh, I mean, it says it looks like I thought they started before because of the pandemic, but it looks like way before. Maybe it's more useful now. Yeah, very possibly. Very possibly. Um, yeah, so it looks like they deployed uh, starting October. I know what, what months are in what order. Uh, and are these weekly number of messages? Oh, okay. Is this in just like ones hmm so they're getting like 80 messages a week at the the high end and then sort of 60 messages a week i guess like if each of those messages is an email that you are not writing as a human being that is a big time savings um i would expect more though given their their high number of users although i guess they did roll it out in a very limited way Uh, user interactions keep shaping the knowledge base day by day, and we intend to get the confidence score higher and higher. Uh, FutureWorks. The work experience gathered with Eva Talk creation shows the need for a system that allows non-technical staff to monitor and change the chatbot's content. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for instance, pedagogues and linguists hey, can contribute to the creation of content uh, in ways that serve users more efficiently and also take care of the language used to communicate with users since the chatbot represents a government platform. Also, since this work is implemented, a chatbot that answers simple questions, we hope that it will ex execute more complex tasks in the future, like issuing certificates and helping users find courses that fit their interests to attend to. Um, yeah, I think this could be, this in particular could be a really, um, really cool, cool application. Lastly, future work include the addition of multi-language support uh, through automatic translations of user messages. I, I think that makes sense if, you know, the vast majority of your messages are in a single language. Um, and especially if the messages are in very closely related languages, because it usually tends to be easier to translate between languages that are, you know, at, like Spanish to Portuguese, I would say, would probably be uh, an easier task for machine translation than Spanish to English because English is less closely related. Uh, uh, uh. The objective of this middleware is to offer minimal chatbot support services to users who do not speak Portuguese. All right, conclusions. EvaTalk chatbot system proved to be a promising tool to lower the demand for human customer service. Uh, some issues still will still need human assistance. I think that's true of, of most customer service situations. But Eva can deal with repetitive and mechanical questions, which are the main problem for EGG, EVG customer service. Its first release was important to understand the complexity of user behavior and the need for evolving processes that require people from many fields of expertise. Yeah, I, I think that's a fantastic way to, to sum, sum up this work. Regarding the development and maintenance of the entire architecture, the main difficulty is that the area is constantly evolving, and Eva's development team must always be prepared to update the tools and methods used to bring the most human-like customer service. That is, the user leaves satisfied with the service provided and did not feel the need to communicate with a human. Yeah, given that this is the thing that they care about, I 
personally, that's what I would measure rather than confidence score, but I understand why they're using confidence. Although the initial content added to training data was raised by EVG teams members, team members, EVA's evolution depends substantially on data collected from user messages. Yes. Um, yeah. Really? Are there any appendices? There are no appendices. Uh, and then a bunch of uh, acknowledgments. There have been some grants, um, which is great. Yeah, this was really cool overall. Um, very good application of a chatbot, I would say. Um, really sort of realistic expectations of what you can expect the chatbot to do. Uh, nice discussion of sort of the challenges of people saying different things and, you know, using informal language and um, their needs change over time. And as more users start to use the system, the, the things that they want and the things that they say and the way that they phrase things change more and more. And, you know, not all questions are asked as often. Particular types of sub-questions are asked way more than all the others. Um, so getting rid of automatically handling the rare things and passing those over to humans. I think that's great. Um, yeah, I have overall really good system paper. I think it brings up a lot of things that uh, really, you know, uh, follow with with my experience. I'm definitely gonna have to look up, look into this uh, Raza generator. I'm guessing that this is like domain generator, like squished together. Um, yeah. Uh, and it says the paper gives uh, one catch, the Raza generator for creating a domain file. We'll try this. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm also I'm also gonna gonna look into that. Um, and also, I really like the the discussion of um, sort of building a team that's not just um, engineers and has you know people who are really good at writing responses and people who can handle the language data. Um, and sort of using everybody's strengths. And I really appreciate that as well. All right, really interesting paper. Uh, thanks to the authors for, for writing it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this and found it helpful. Um, I, definitely, uh, I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was a good paper. And we will be back tomorrow with live coding and we'll be talking about different deployment stuff. Um, it's basically gonna be sort of project scoping where I figure out what are some of my options for deploying the system that we've been working on together? And um, maybe I'll pick one. I don't know. I'll pull together a big, uh, a big sort of uh, list of options going forward that we can refer back to. So that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. It's probably going to be more uh, scoping than coding, but I hope to see you there regardless. Uh, and have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for joining.